You don't have to spend long in the cryptocurrency space before you start hearing about decentralized exchanges and how they're where you'll find your next 100x. The problem is that the automated market makers that these decentralized exchanges use are kind of flawed and not as good an experience as centralized exchange counterparts such as Binance. This has led to the creation of the Loopring protocol, which gives anyone the ability to create a DEX with all of the same functionality and features as a centralized exchange. but built on Ethereum. So stick around and let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Sprague, and if there's one thing I actually really dislike about the current state of cryptocurrency, it's just how high the gas fees are on the Ethereum chain. Now, I'm sure that you've probably got sick of me saying how high the fees are and how much I dislike it, but if you were to try and perform any sort of token swap on Uniswap right now, it would set you back $100 in fees alone. With Ethereum being the biggest chain, however, it's only logical that new tokens would be built on Ethereum to stand the highest chance of success. If we look at the top 40 tokens by market cap, only six of them are not built on Ethereum. And this makes complete sense. If you were building a shop in real life, you would build it where the people are and not in the middle of the countryside. This means that anything built on Ethereum does get to take advantage of the nice things like decentralization, security, and large quantities of traffic, but unfortunately it also comes with a detrimental side of that, which is gas fees and congestion. And this is where Loopring comes in, aiming to solve those existing problems while also giving some just nice to have features to build your DEXs with. But before we get into Loopring, if you enjoy my content and you wanna see more coin deep dives, technical explanations, and even just opinion pieces from myself, then feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. And if there's anything on the channel that I'm yet to explain or any coins that you'd like to suggest that I do a video on, feel free to join the Discord, the link's in the description. But now that that self shilling's out of the way, let's get back to Loopring and how it was founded. Like a lot of the current market's most promising projects, Loopring first appeared during the 2017 bull run in the form of an ICO. Started by Daniel Wang, an ex-Google engineer and his team, they managed to raise $45 million in this ICO. Unfortunately, at the same time this ICO was happening, China decided to impose regulation that made ICOs illegal. This meant that the Loopring team, being based out of Shanghai, were forced to give back most of the money they'd raised, only managing to keep around $7.5 million of it to start the company. Now, unlike a lot of the projects in the cryptocurrency space where the teams behind them are made up majoritively of admin and marketing roles, of Loopring's 30 members, 23 of them are engineers working directly on the protocol. This goes as far as them only actually hiring a head of growth and a community manager in the middle of last year showing just how committed they were to building the project for the first three years. This means that unlike a lot of projects in the cryptocurrency space that start their marketing extremely early, sometimes trying to hook in investors before they even have a first working version, Loopring's entire focus for the first three years was just building a product and letting it sell itself. Arguably, had the market not become so saturated with people almost acting like salesmen trying to shove any half-baked crypto project down investors' throats, this strategy might have actually worked. Now, if you've watched my Nano video, you'll know I'm a sucker for any platform that aims to do just one thing and do it well. And that's exactly what Loopring does. Instead of trying to make a layer two that can do everything Ethereum can, instead they are just focused on creating a DEX protocol. This isn't to say, however, that the company isn't moving towards a greater feature set in the future, such as providing Ethereum virtual machine compatibility. However, given how tight-lipped they are on this right now, shows that they really just want you to focus on what the product currently does. Now, before I get into how the Loopring protocol plans to do DEXs, I'd recommend watching my DeFi Demystified video up here, where I explain how the current state of DEXs work. The Loopring protocol aims to give anyone the capability to start their own DEX without having to do any of the heavy lifting that comes with actually doing so. Loopring is to decentralize centralized exchanges what Tendermint is to proof of stake chains. It's certainly not the only way to do it, but it removes a lot of the grunt work required to actually get off the ground. At the core of everything, there is a zero knowledge proof rollup layer built on top of the Ethereum chain. And don't worry if you have no idea what any of the words I just said mean, I'm gonna try and give you enough of an explanation that you can understand exactly how the Loopring protocol works without filling up an entire video. Zero knowledge proof is not unique to crypto. In fact, it actually predates Bitcoin by 25 years. And it's just a way for one party to prove to another party that a statement is true. What makes it special, however, is that the recipient party doesn't need to be privy to any of the information that actually went into proving the statement. 
Think of it like a magic trick. And if I was Andre Jick, I would do a magic trick right now, but unfortunately I'm not. So you're just gonna have to imagine this. If a magician came up to me and said that he could write down the card that I would pick out of a deck before I picked it and then proceeded to do so, I could be reasonably sure that he could in fact replicate and redo that trick any number of times and always receive the correct outcome. The thing is though, that I have no idea how he did the trick. I only know that he can do the trick. Therefore, he has proven he's capable of doing it without showing me the steps involved. So when we apply this to crypto, this means that we could do something on the layer two and still be able to prove to the base layer that what we did was correct without having to actually show the base layer how we came to that conclusion. This is extremely important in a trustless environment such as the blockchain. So now that we know that the zero proof part just means that we are able to tell the Ethereum chain that something is true and have the chain believe us, we move on to the roll up part. Every transfer in Ethereum requires a transaction. This means that if we want to perform 100 transfers, we need 100 transactions. Now, it's easy to see that a much more efficient way of doing this would be to bundle up those 100 transfers and put them in a single transaction. The problem is that the the Ethereum chain can only read the actual transaction itself and not what happens in the event log of the transaction. So this means that all 100 transactions that we've put in the event log would just be ignored. But now what if we took our zero proof protocol and proved to the base chain that all of those transactions conform to the same rules that the base chain is using to process its transactions? Now, we could put through a hundred transfers in a single transaction and simply just say to the base chain, this is correct. So when we combine this all together, zero knowledge proof rollups or ZK rollups are simply just a way of taking a bunch of transactions off chain and submitting them back to the base chain with proof that they all conform to the rules the base chain expects of them. This is, as you can imagine, a far cheaper way of actually performing transfers. Hopefully that explanation was enough for you to make sense of how ZK rollups work and how they apply to the Loopring protocol. But if it wasn't, leave me a comment down below and I'll make a dedicated crypto bits video on ZK rollups and ZK snarks. So now that we know how transfers are gonna be performed on our layer two Loopring protocol, how are the other functions of a DEX going to work? At the core of everything is the Loopring relayer. This relayer is in charge of doing things like generating the proofs, building blocks, matching orders in the order book, and much more. The Loopring protocol will work with any relayer. However, currently there is just a single canonical relayer run by the Loopring Foundation. Now, I do have some concerns about this, but as usual, I'll save them to the end, so stick around. All you need to know for now is that everything that Loopring does is entirely non-custodial. What that means is your funds are never out with your control. If at any point you want to get your funds back, you can. This even goes as far as to say that if your withdrawal has not been processed within 15 minutes, all DEX functionality will cease other than the withdrawal function. On top of this, you can send a forced withdrawal at any time. Even if the user interface or application that you're using goes down, you can send this through Ethereum. Now, as I mentioned, when you're starting a DEX, there is one major hurdle that you need to overcome, and this is building up enough liquidity to actually be able to provide token pairs. This is a major stumbling block for a lot of new DEXs because without that liquidity, you can't process any transactions. This also has the knock-on effect that as a user, you will end up going to the DEX that's got the largest number of token pairs to let you do as many of your swaps in one go as you want. The problem is that this normally means then that there is a lot of liquidity locked behind a single smart contract. And where there's money, malicious and bad actors will follow. Large quantities of money just sitting in a liquidity pool is like a big red X to hackers who will then want to try and break into that smart contract to release those funds for themselves. So the approach taken by Loopring is a hybrid one where order management is done off chain, but block finality and transactions are performed on chain. This means that anyone can use the underlying power of Loopring to create their own decks without needing to actually build up any liquidity because the liquidity will be shared across all DEXs on the Loopring protocol. Another great thing about the Loopring protocol as well is that we won't end up with liquidity fragmentation. This is where given a finite amount of liquidity spread across enough DEXs would mean that we would have to bounce between all of the different DEXs to try and perform all of the swaps that we want to do. And to me, the greatest benefit of 
of all of this is the security that the Loot Pring protocol enforces when it comes to your funds. Any liquidity locked behind the Loot Pring protocol can be retrieved at any time using the previous state of the funds. So if those funds were in your wallet and you can prove that they are yours, you can get them back. So in the event of a hack, all users' funds could be returned to the people that supplied them. This is a huge selling point for me and one that a lot of people should take great deals of comfort in when providing liquidity. Because it's bad enough that you have to deal with slippage and impermanent loss, the fear of a hack is just another thing that you don't really want to have to think about. Now, as I mentioned previously in the video, Loopring didn't really go for an aggressive marketing strategy. And unfortunately, I think this is kind of to its detriment now that the market is booming. Because unfortunately, the partnerships are few and far between. There's a couple of small ones here and there, but nothing major. And I know that some of you might currently be screaming at me to mention GameStop, but unfortunately there has been no news on this. So until a formal announcement has been made, we cannot assume that it's definitely going to be Loot Pring that GameStop is using. In terms of supply and distribution, there's currently 1.2 billion Loot Pring in circulation, which is just 100 million less than the 1.3 billion max supply. This is because there's already been 100 million Loot Pring burnt. Any transaction on the Loot Pring protocol incurs a fee. The same way that doing it on the base blockchain would. The difference is this fee is minuscule compared to what Ethereum would charge. The total fee for any transaction is 0.3%. With 0.2% of that fee going back to the liquidity providers as incentive, and 0.1% of that fee going to the Loopring DAO, or Decentralized Autonomous Organization. The use of the LRC that's given to the Loopring DAO by these fees is then voted on. The uses for these funds are things like incentivizing partnerships through grants, impermanent loss protection, incentivizing liquidity on top of the already 0.2% fee, or just burning it to reduce the LRC supply. Now, it's quite hard to speculate on a potential upside for Loopring purely because of the fact it doesn't really have any competitors in the market. So the only logical thing that we can do is look at its value proposition at the logical extreme, which is taking over all other DEXs in the space. This means that we can use Uniswap as a very rough idea for where Loopring could potentially get to if the marketing is done correctly and it grows at the speed that people are expecting it to. If this eventual outcome is reached and it was to flip Uniswap, it would have an upside of 274%, ending on a total price of $5.95. It is not, however, all sunshine and rainbows, and as per usual, I do have some concerns. Firstly, despite the Loopring protocol being relayer agnostic, that is to say that anyone can come along and build a relayer and the Loopring protocol will listen to it. Unfortunately, in its present state, the only relayer is run by the Loopring Foundation and is closed source. This does mean that as of right now, there is a centralized aspect to the Loopring protocol. Now, hopefully I've done a good enough job of explaining why this isn't actually as big a red flag as you might have thought it would be, given that it's entirely non-custodial and there is layers on layers of protocol to make sure that you, the user, are always in control of your own funds. I just personally take a little bit of issue with the fact that at the current time, an investment in LRC would entirely depend on the Loopring Foundation keeping up their promise of running that relayer. They have, however, explained that this was just the path of least resistance to get Loopring to grow and be developed, and that further down the line, this will be course corrected and decentralized. Which leads me on to my second concern, which is marketing. As it stands, Loopring has $450 million million dollars locked behind its smart contract, which is far less than I would expect for a project that's got 2.1 billion market cap. Take Curve.fi for example, it sits only a hundred million dollars greater in market cap, but has over 20 billion dollars locked behind its smart contract on Ethereum alone. This in itself might not be cause for concern. However, the Loopring Dex example was actually built out of a necessity of not being able to find a partnership to show off their platform. For me, the success of Loopring is going to entirely rely on them being able to land some big partnerships to actually create some DEXs to show what the protocol can do. Because building their own DEX is good, but they really need to show that people are 
willing to actually take the plunge and build on it. I think the problem is that right now, a lot of Loopring's interest is in the retail investor space, and they really need to start pushing it out into the wider DeFi audience and try and get some developers to just build on their protocol and incentivize them to do so. This, however, is easily remedied, and the fact that they have managed to gain so much popularity in the last few months will inevitably bring more eyes to the project and potentially incentivize some of those people to finally take the plunge. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I do actually think the Loopring protocol has a great future ahead of it because we are already starting to see some of the problems that they actually said would happen in their 2017 white paper. And if we can get DEXs that reduce the gas fees and allow us to actually make trades on the Ethereum network without paying the exorbitant $100 that it requires to do a single transaction, it has an insanely bright future ahead of it. If you did enjoy this one, don't forget to leave me a like down below and leave me a comment. And if you just generally enjoy my content, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Thanks, bye.